This is Radio TV Phono Nut, and I'm normally not into these uh, reproduction radios. It's made to look like one from 60 or 70 or 80 years ago. I remember back in 1989, I was 13 years old and just getting started into collecting old radios, and my parents gave me a Thomas AMFM Cathedral with the side-mounted cassette player, the same type that was used in a lot of the cheapy automobile stereos where you put the tape in and it automatically starts playing and you push the button in one click for fast forward and then push it all the way in to eject the tape. Well, that Thomas Cathedral never worked right from day one. It always motorboated on the radio and it wasn't long before the uh, cassette player started eating tapes and acting screwy. And I kept it for several years, a number of years, and after my parents passed away, I was cleaning out and I ended up giving it to somebody who wanted it just for the radio. Of course, now I'm wishing I would have kept it because they gave it to me, but those are easy enough to find replacements for. So, But anyway, I found this thing that's still in the box. This is a GE AM FM radio with a cassette recorder built in. And we'll get a good look at the box here. There's the blurb about radio in the 1930s and blah, blah, blah. And here's the other side of the box with more uh, advertising on it. This one has a nicer cassette deck than the Thomas had. This one has what I'd call a normal cassette deck with actual buttons on it. And you can actually record off of the radio with this model. There's the date code. Looks like it was made in 1990. There's the Thompson Consumer Electronics uh, printing on the bottom of the box. I don't know when GE first started making these. I've seen them as early as 88, and I know they weren't cheap. Of course, Thomas that was given to me wasn't cheap. It was just cheap on performance. All right, let's get it out of the box and see what it looks like. I feel like this thing wasn't used much. The instruction book is nowhere to be found, but everything else is there. This was probably given to someone and they just ended up, for whatever reason, not using it much and just putting it back in the box. All right, here we go. Bring a friend, family member, or even a co-worker with you and get $20 when both of you do Mm. For more coverage, visit statefarm.com. And then you get in your house that. Are you ready for the Metamucil two weeks? Monthly or one time job. Custom cleaning. They don't a thousand times the cost. thing we've ever seen before. We'll stop all that. I think that's the oldest station, about our classic hit station, about 90 miles away. Low mileage, pre on car. Let's try him. Got some thunderstorms in the area, so. There's a distant station. I didn't have that. Good point. Anyway, that's kind of Kyler Murray because he's 
$9.99. But when you hit the Sean Hannity Square and the... W-Y-L-S, it's fairly hard to get. Are massive, and that includes all my pillow products, including their body pillow. Uh, you know, it's just going to depend on what kind of guy you are. And this is uh, where you're with Josh Rosen. Josh Rosen I haven't also took a bunch of sacks last year, but Josh yet. Rosen's mom is, uh, is it both I'm going to try this with an appropriate tape. Fibber McGee and Molly. I've had that tape probably 30 years. I probably got that when I got the Thomas Cathedral, and this tape's really not in good shape anymore. In fact, it probably got mangled on that Thomas Cathedral, so let's see what it does here. I'm not really too worried about the cassette deck in this, but... The NFL.com. Okay, play. <coughs> Look at your piano tonight or your dining room table. You'll see smudges or fingerprints that weren't there yesterday, and no dust cloth can take those And that tape had drop out on it anyway, so... That will not only clean your furniture, it will polish it to a high luster, and quickly. So that's not the tape player causing that. So quickly, dries so quickly, polishes so quickly that using it is practically as easy as dusting. With Johnson's Clean Wax, you can clean and then beautifully polish a dining room table in less than two minutes. Yeah, those That's tapes used to be, be available at Cracker Barrel so restaurants rapidly. everywhere. Ready for Here's the back. Let's open it up and have a look inside. Here's the inside, about what you'd expect, but no dropping resistor? You mean GE actually used a power transformer? Yeah, I figured by this time they probably had to be come to meet more stringent safety standards, so that's probably why they used a power transformer. But GE really loved using those dropping resistors to drop the incoming AC line voltage to get the right voltage for the chassis. Yeah, it's got a decent sized speaker in it for a table radio. And you can see where GE tried to be authentic looking here with the design of the knobs and even on the dial. They have it calibrated in megacycles and kilocycles like it would have been done back in the old days instead of kilohertz and megahertz like what it was, like what most modern radios were when this was made. So yeah, I know most of you probably feel like, feel about reproductions about like I do, but if you ever find one of these GEs like this or the AMFM Cathedral radio, they're not bad radios, and if you can get them cheap, get them. You know, they'll make a nice everyday performer and are not bad-looking sets. You know, the Thomas and the Crosley crap, all that could fall off of the face of the earth, and it wouldn't hurt my feelings any. Like I said, the only motivation I would have for picking up one of the Thomas reproductions would be because my parents gave me one whenever I was 13 years old, but... I, uh, I really don't hold those in very high regard. And there we are back in the box. And now I want to talk about brand recognition for a few minutes. As you heard, that GE branded radio we just listened to, it worked quite well for what it was, but in all reality, it's actually a GE in name only. You see, in 1986, GE bought out RCA, and then a couple of years later, GE sold off their consumer electronics division to Thompson Consumer Electronics, which basically at that point, all they were doing was slapping the RCA and GE names on whatever products that were made in, by who knows what company overseas. I mean, so technically that radio was just a GE-branded radio that was made in Malaysia somewhere. But, you know, people recognized the brand. That same radio was also sold with the RCA brand on it, and people see that and they think like, oh, well, my grandparents, they had a RCA cathedral that they got in like in 1934, and that thing lasted them 40 years. So, you know, GE and RCA or Zenith or pick whatever brand you want, insert whatever brand you want in there, 
it's got to be a good product well that's not always the case look what happened to Zenith in the 1990s they used to be the best TV ever made well then they went to crap once Gold Star got a hold of them but people bought them because they thought their 30 year old Zenith would was a good TV which it was and they thought the new Zenith from 1996 would last just as long well two years later when the picture tube was short out and burn up the chassis and then they'd take it to have it fixed and find out it's not worth fixing and then they weren't too happy with Zenith at that point it's like the Crosley and Victrola and Emerson and many other brand names that they slap on these modern pieces of crap reproduction radio and record player combinations and whatnot. people see those names they associate it with an old American brand and all it really is is just uh, an importer that bought the rights to use those brand names and they slap them on inferior made junk from China that's nowhere near the quality of what the vintage stuff is I know a while back you might remember a Zenith clock radio that I featured that was made in the early 70's AM FM job kinda of beat up made in Korea I believe probably made by Gold Star I almost didn't list it on eBay because I figured wouldn't nobody want it I almost threw it in the garbage well I listed it on eBay and somebody ran it up to like 2450 I believe I can guarantee you because it had the Zenith name on it that's what that's what did it however we have this Lloyd's clock radio and I know the first thing most people think when they hear the word Lloyd's they associate it they associate the brand with the cheap crap from the 70's and yes most of it was cheap and a lot of it didn't perform very well but as far as these little AM clock radios go from the late 60's on up it pretty much didn't matter what brand name was stamped on them they usually had cheap imported guts in them like RCA, Zenith, Admiral, Motorola, Philco etc by that time they pretty much had the same caliber of chassis shoved in them so as far as these little radios go it really doesn't matter what brand you you see stamped on them by the late 60's early 70's they were pretty much all the same quality in this radio you've seen a video on it I've overhauled it cleaned it up good it looks a heck of a lot nicer than that Zenith did and even though I've listed this on eBay two or three times nobody's bought it but I guarantee you if it said RCA, Philco, or Zenith, or Admiral, or Motorola, or whatever, in place of that Lloyd's name, it would have been gone the first time I put it on there. But since it says Lloyd's on it, nobody seems to want it. Even though it plays just as good as any other cheap AM clock radio. So, right. so this this goes to a point which people are. You think they didn't like the tweet? To make an old subject feel like a fresh thought and unconventional. Hey, say that. I, I don't think. I didn't say no. They're as devoted and passionate to the sport as the drivers and racing teams themselves. But unlike the I mean, organization and Belichick being his coach and McDaniels essentially being his OC, and just the scheme that they get rid of the ball and Brady I doesn't take big hits. You got Russ? I've got another RCA clock radio in the house. I'm not going to bring it out, but it's in a little white plastic plain Jane case. Not as fancy as this. It's from about the same time period as this radio. Plays just about as well, but doesn't have the features this one does. It it has no buzzer or no sleep timer or snooze button, just a off on and alarm to turn the radio on. And it plays about as good as this one does, maybe a tad bit better, but not enough to worry about. But anyway, if we're going to give this one more shot, if anybody wants to buy this, I'll put it on eBay one more time. If it doesn't go this time, it'll, it'll just sit on the shelf. 
most likely right next to the cheapo RCA.